Welcome back to Unirunner Video Drum Lessons for July 22nd, 2008. My name's Darren Mathis. Glad you could tune in once again. And today I'm going to just plan on going through as many voicemails as I can get through in the next few minutes. I've got a whole list of them. Uh, so stay tuned if I'm not able to get through them this time and you did call in. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get it to them in the future. So let's start with the first one here. Hey Darren, um, it's Lewis from New Jersey. And, um, I just want to say, you know, I've, I've been playing, uh, I've been playing drums for a long time now, and I just found your, uh, I just found your podcast recently, and it's been a big help to me. So uh, thank you for that. And I just have one question. Um, I've been, uh, I've been trying to play sixteenth notes on the hi hat with two hands, uh, but um, whenever I get to the snare beat on two, uh, I can't hit the, uh, the the snare and the um, and the hi hat at the same time. So it just sounds open and weird. You know, um, and I've been trying to play it with uh, with one hand, but it doesn't sound as good. So, um, yeah, and I, I just think it's a coordination problem. So, uh, if if you could help with like tips on how to uh, how to make that better, that'd be great. And uh, thanks, but Hey, Lewis, thanks for your voicemail. Let me see if I understand what you're asking here. So, if you're playing sixteenths on the hi hat like this. One e and a, two e and a. I'm playing one e and a, two e and a, and then I'm going to play the backbeat on the snare. One e and a, two e and a. Three. So you notice every time I hit the two and the four, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, uh, this, my right hand comes over and plays the snare. So I think what Lewis is asking about is how you can keep that sixteenth note, sixteenth note pattern going on the hi hat and still play the snare drum at the same time. Well, there are ways to do it. Uh, normally when I play that beat, I just don't play the, the hi-hat on the two and four. And uh, it doesn't really make that big a difference to me, but if you want to try and hit the high, fit the hi-hat in there, you might try uh, doubling, doubling up on one of the hands like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. And then once you play the, so you'll be playing the hi-hat and the snare drum at the same time, come back in with your left hand again after, right after that backbeat. So that would sound something like this. So you're going you're gonna to double up on the left hand right before that backbeat. Uh, so you can bring your right hand over and play the hi-hat at the same time. But you got to make sure to hit the hi-hat with your left hand immediately after that backbeat. So. That would be one way to do it. I would have to practice that to get that up to speed. But if you really want to be able to play the hi-hat and snare drum at the same time, that's one way to do it. Otherwise, I usually just do something like this. See, you notice I can't really, it doesn't make that much of a difference uh, in my opinion that the, I'm not hitting the hi-hat on every backbeat because the backbeat is so loud in that case. Hey, it's me, Marvin Brown from Germany, and I'm 15 years old. Uh, hey, Darren, first of all, thank you for uh, such, such a great podcast like yours. Uh, I've got a few questions, and uh, I need answers. Uh, first of all, do you think it's really important to use triplets in a song and stuff like that? <coughs> and I'm looking, temporary, I'm looking for jump, something like a jump car, because when I kick kick my kick drum it just moves around and stuff but I don't want to spend the $70 on one so is there any shape uh, any shape other device I could use alright thanks in advance uh, so from a bad English Marvin hey Marvin thanks a lot for your voicemail okay so the questions were is it necessary to play triplets in a song uh, well, that's a good question. Is it really necessary to do anything in a song? It probably goes back to what I've mentioned before about expressing, expressing emotion. It just depends on what you like to express within a song and what you hear in your head and not to get too esoteric but also in your heart as well. Uh, it's just kind of what allows you to express that emotion. If triplets in a song are going to allow you to do that, fine. Uh, one thing that's good that triplets do a lot of times is just stand out. Uh, you could be rocking along in a song 
one yen, two yen, one yen, you know, things like that, like that triplet, ba 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 ba. Sometimes they make a statement because they can stand out from the very uh, cut and dry sounding eighth notes, sixteenth notes, and quarter notes that you might otherwise hear. Uh, so they're they are good for making statements in different ways, and and then in the fills too. Uh, like for instance, I'll play some fast triplets. So those were triplets there. Triplet, triplet, triplet. So I'm playing triplet, triplet. The last two triplets are on the kick drum. Triplet, triplet. So one. So basically, I'm dividing up. Triplet, triplet. Triplet, triplet. That's kind of a cool lick. And those were just. Uh, I suppose if I was playing that, those would have been uh, eighth note triplets at the end there. So, is it necessary, uh, Marvin? Absolutely not. But if that's what you're hearing in your head, uh, I would definitely incorporate them. It just depends on uh, what you're trying to accomplish with the song, what kind of musical statement you're trying to accomplish as well. Now, a question about the drum carpet. That's a very good question. I'll show you what I've got here that I use for a drum carpet that's worked really well. Okay. So, so what I've got for a drum carpet here is a. Uh, it's just a, I don't know what you call these, remnants or scraps or something. It's just an old piece of carpet that I bought from a carpet store. And uh, I've got it marked, spiked as they call it, with, uh, with a magic marker where I want everything to go. I did that initially with tape until I had played with it for quite a few times until I made sure I, everything was where I wanted it to go. So now I've spiked it with a magic marker marking the locations of uh, the stands and whatnot, so that's allowed me to set up quite a bit faster. But uh, Marvin talked about his bass drum sliding. So if you look here, really, if your bass drum's giving you the most uh, trouble, all you need really is just a piece of carpet that runs from under your seat to your kick drum pedal. And you might also want it to get b big enough to go under your hi-hat pedal as well. But those are the things, since you're going to be hitting those with your foot, that if they're anchored to this carpet that's also under your drum seat, uh, everything else is probably going to be okay if uh, you just want to go with a minimal size. But like I said, I like to have carpet under my entire kit so I can spike the locations. And uh, I don't have to worry, you know, uh, depending on what the surface I'm going to be playing is, that it's going to be sliding around or, uh, well, I just have a consistent surface then and I, I'll know that maybe I won't have to accidentally scratch some wood or something like that. It'll be less likely a scratch. But you still risk scratching things because the spikes on these, my particular pedals here, will go right through the carpet, but they do help it to stay. Uh, one thing on this DW pedal that it's absolutely not going to move because on the bottom of there you've got Velcro in addition to the spikes that go into the carpet you got Velcro so if you don't have Velcro on your bottom of your kick drum pedal you can always just pick some up at a hardware store put the uh, the more plastic or the coarser I think that's the hook part onto uh, the bottom of your kick drum pedal so it's very hard for me to move this pedal anywhere uh, because I've got the Velcro, it's on the spikes, it's attached to the kick drum, and also on the front of the kick drum there are spikes that go into the carpet. So that's really not going to go anywhere. But uh, as I mentioned, for a, a minimal setup to keep your bass drum from sliding, I would just recommend getting at least a piece of carpet that's going to go from the bottom of your uh, drum throne on, all the way under your kick drum pedal and your hi-hat pedal and hopefully most manufacturers are putting spikes on their their hi-hat pedals and their kick drum pedals if you want some extra hold like I said you might want to put some velcro on there and uh, 
not all bass drums I know have the spikes but on the on the spurs there or the spurs on your uh, bass drum feet or legs uh, but if you've got spikes that go on your kick drum or on your kick drum pedal they go into the carpet that's definitely going to be enough to hold it in most cases well Marvin and Lewis thanks for your voicemails appreciate it it was fun responding to those and uh, Look forward to responding to more voicemails in the future. If you'd like to support this podcast, I recently put together a collection of all of my 2006 lessons, and that's the year I first started where I did a podcast every week. So now I put all those podcasts onto one DVR, so they're actually MP4 files that you can watch on your computer or iPod, or you can burn to a DVD if you have software to do that to watch it on your TV. But they're the same format that the that the uh, podcast came in originally, and uh, before I moved them off the server. So if you'd be interested in supporting Unirunner, uh, this, this podcast, you can go to unirunner.com forward slash 2006. It's three and a half hours of uh, video drum lessons uh, hosted by me, and uh, all the proceeds will go to support this year's uh, free podcast. So appreciate your support. And until next time. Keep practicing, and God bless. Now available from Unirunner.com, it's the Unirunner Drum Lessons 2006 collection. It's 42 iPod Mac PC compatible drum lesson videos hosted by me, Darren Mathis from Unirunner.com. More than three and a half hours delivered on either a flash drive for $35 or a DVD-R disc for $15. These are the same MP4 video files that were hosted at Unirunner.com before they were taken offline. Some of the 42 of titles include double strokes, match grip, paradiddles, triplet drum, fills using double strokes, subtle double kick drum technique, the power of the flam, tuning and head comparison, and much more. Proceeds go to support this year's free video podcast. Thank you for your support. Again, that's the Unirunner Video Drum Lessons 2006 collection. For more information, go to unirunner.com forward slash 2006. Thank you for your support. Until next time, keep practicing and God bless.